I've just fitted coilovers to my BMW 1 Series and I'm about to find out if that's a good idea or not. So Ben, as I showed last week, we've got some wonderful stance coilovers to put onto my car. I've not yet unboxed them. They are still in here, very nicely wrapped up. Here they are. This is something I've never done. It's a kit I've never used. Wish us luck. So those are the coilovers, they look awesome. Nice purple accents as well, which I'm really quite happy with. I believe stance are quite well known. I mean, they're budget coilovers, but they're definitely some good ones. If you wonder what the noise is, Jake's in the back. He's standing there, like, he's tending them just like I did. But let's crack all of these nuts on the front wheels, can do the fronts first, get the car in the air and get those wheels off. have the car up in the air and I've already taken the front left strut out. Now I'm going to explain everything that I did when I do the right strut because I feel like that will just be a lot easier because I don't actually know what I'm doing because I had no clue when I was doing this. I did it three days ago now. It took five hours but it's actually really really straightforward. I'm going to get this side back together and get the wheel on and then we'll crack on with the right side. Also my usual companion's back. Joe and he's got his 135i with him which he's got some epic upgrades coming soon to that I think he's got a full M track package coming from BMW it looks insane but maybe we'll catch back on that in a few weeks time once he's got that done for now the car is the main aim or well, my car anyway so I'm just struggling to get the drop link in at the moment I'm not sure if I've got the correct angle from obviously the mountain point there and then the anti-roll bar down there I'm not actually sure if I've got the hub up high enough but because I'm stuck, I'm going to start cracking on with getting this side apart. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually install the new top mount onto the coilover and then we'll start removing some of the components over here. So I bought this some brand new top mounts as I didn't fancy taking the old ones off and then swapping them over. So in this part, in this bag here from your car parts is obviously brand new top mounts to go onto the coilovers. And I'm going to show you how to install them really quickly because they actually are a little bit more of a headache, you could say, than what you may think. So for the top of the coilover, especially with these stance ones, take the top bolt and then the top mount basically sits over the top and then that top nut sits on the thread, but it's a bit of a difficult thread because you've got to press the spring down and at the same time you've got to pass a 5mm Allen key through the middle with a pass through right, uh, socket basically over the top like that and then you can do it up but you also need somebody to um, hold the spring down at the same time. Break my heart if you want to, but I really don't mind. And just like that your top mount is now attached to the coilover and that is not going anywhere. It's ready to go on the car. Now the top mount is installed. First thing we're doing is putting some penetrating oil onto the bottom of the drop link because that's the first thing we're going to take off. And then I think we'll probably crack on with a top bolt on the drop link afterwards. So I've got a 16 mil socket on a, another socket, which is obviously held onto this. And oh, by the power of strength, hopefully. Oh yeah, there we go. Right, now I've got a cracked. We need a 17 mil spanner on the nut on this side to hold it so that you can actually undo it and then there you go that will come undone and that's the bottom bolt for the drop link that's called muscles mate so like i said it is now the top bolt for the drop link put a bit of penetrating oil on that and then i believe that is also a 16 again yeah that's a 16 Oh, and that's that nut undone too. Same thing again, hold the spanner on the nut and then undo it with the wrench. When you're feeling down, I'll always hold you close. So you'll also have the brake line come off as well. And that is the drop link removed. Next up, we're gonna remove the track rod end, which is this shaft here. It's basically a steering one that keeps your wheel basically in line with your steering wheel. 
when you take this off you pretty much want to get a wheel alignment afterwards or otherwise your steering will be off to an angle That is the track quad removed, and as you can see now, we can just put this wheel hub wherever we want. Now, the next thing I'm gonna take out, I believe this is called a front arm, but there's a long bolt that sits, well, it goes all the way through it like that. It's got a fixed knot on the other side. If I get under the car and crack that, pull that one out, that arm comes off, and then there's one more arm, pretty much, and then we should be able to take the wheel hub away from the shock. So that is the arm now dropped off. One of the longest bolts that is. And uh, yeah, that's actually not too bad to get off. The next one is that one just there. I think that's the rear, I don't know if that's a control arm or whatever that is, but that is the exact same thing. An 18 on that side, and I believe it's an 18 open spanny one hole on that side. And basically just contract the other and just go like that. And that bolt will come out. It's the exact same length as this one. And then it's literally this one right here left. After a little bit of persuasion, I managed to get the bolt out and the nut off. Bit difficult because the track rod was in the way. But once I got it out, I moved on to removing the bolt that held the wheel hub to the shock absorber. So I have just realized that I probably should have cracked this bolt a little bit sooner because now I've got to try and turn this. But as soon as I try and turn this, this one wants to turn with it. But that is okay because I can hold it still and then undo it. But just be wary, I'm probably going to do that one first after you do the drop mix. So everything is obviously loosened over here now, but I'm having a real struggle getting the hub off. Um, it's been quite a while now because I've been trying to figure out the other side. The drop link is now on and we'll show you. The only issue that I'm having over here is I've now, uh, there's basically a ball joint at the bottom here for the front arm. I've basically rounded off the little torx bit on the bottom so I can't actually hold it to do the nut up. So I'm gonna have to get a new arm, I think, and drill it out. Luckily, I can pick one up tomorrow if I do need it. But I'll assess my options later this evening. But yeah, I'm really struggling to hit down on the the like the wheel hub bit, this, to basically get it away from the shock absorber. And then once that comes off, this arm here should come off as well. But yeah, I'm struggling because I just don't have really have a point to knock it on. I mean, I'll give it a go. Like I'll try loads of different things but it's just not moving when trying to remove the hub from the shock absorber i encountered a pretty common issue after a long time the shock absorber and the hub can almost corrode together and make them stick and they do not want to come apart when that happens so to counteract this i took a chisel and knocked it in between the little slot where the bolt goes through and it just split it ever so slightly just enough where i could hit it with a rubber mallet to almost drop it off of the shock absorber that became a lot easier once I put this chisel up in that gap there, it allowed me to just split that ever so slightly and I tapped it off. And this is absolutely filthy, that. The next is we've got to take off these 13 mil nuts at the top and then that whole shock absorber will drop straight out. We can put that one straight back in. <laughs> So whilst taking these three nuts up at the top, it's always important to hold the strut at the bottom or the shock absorber, should I say, at the bottom. Otherwise, it will just drop straight off and onto the floor. And you don't really want that to happen, especially when you have the wheel hub underneath it. But that right there is what we are taking off. And now we can put the coilover in. So now with the brand new coilovers, there's a little, um, how do you like a pin there which sits up in, there's a hole there that's next to obviously a thread and that's where the pin goes in. So make sure you have this the right way. And then what you wanna do is bring it up from the bottom, look up top, line it up uh, about like that and get two of the nuts on because two are finger tight. Well, two you can get with your fingers and then one needs to be done with a spanner. But if you get two of the nuts on, just like that, that will hold up. But I'm also gonna do these up ever so slightly with the with my wrench. Wrong way.
There we go, that's nipped up. And that one's also nipped up. Now for the third one, I'm going to need this spanner as it's sat underneath my, um, my strut bar and I don't really want to take it off because it's just a little bit more hassle when you can literally just get to it with a spanner, like I said. There, all three of these are now nipped up and the coilover is now going to be held in place for the hub to go back on. The next thing I'm going to do is grease the inside of this or otherwise it won't slide on as nice and it may actually be a little bit difficult to get off. So next up, we're going to use the jack and we're basically gonna get this wheel hub in line with this and we're gonna basically jack it up into position and that should hopefully just slide straight on. As soon as it's like lined up um, and not going at an angle, it will just slide straight through. There, so with the wheel hub now gone right up into the bottom of the shock absorber there, we can now put this bolt back through, not forgetting that, oh no. Oh, damn it, I'm gonna have to take it all back off because this needs to be sat through there, but this needs to go around the strut bar. Damn. Okay, one sec. There, quick and easy fix. This is now around the strut, and this should now clip into the back of here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that clips on in there, nice. Now we need to get the bolts to go through. So now we're gonna put obviously the bolt through here. Oh, what's stopping that? Is it this? There we go, right, that's through. And then the nut will go on the opposite end. So now I've got a 18 spanner holding the nut and I've got an 18 socket in my, uh, in my ratchet here. And uh, yeah, we're basically just doing that nut up and doing the bolt up and that should pull tight. There we go, that's pulling nice and tight. So all I need to do now is just tighten this up. Oh, okay, it's really nice and tight. And this is gonna hold the two of these together. That is the hub and the, the uh, shock absorber, of course. Oh. There we go, nice and tight. And that shouldn't go anywhere. Next thing's drop link. Actually, next up, we're gonna put in the rear control arm as that is a little bit more fiddly and requires this to be maneuvered around. So that's the rear arm now in. It's time to get the front one back in. It's getting on 9 p.m. now, but we keep going. We ain't stopping until we get this back together. And that is the front control arm back on. The last thing we need to do up here now is get the track rod in. So we'll make sure the steering wheel is straight and then we'll get this wheel as straight as possible, put the track rod in on the end there and tighten that up. There's a drop link and we're done. Wheel on the steering wheel is straight. Track rod is in. Now we need to get this nut in. Once I had the nut over the bolt, I was able to just tighten that down. Then I moved on to putting the drop link in, making sure not to forget to put the brake line in with it. And then it was just held on by a bolt at the top and the bottom. After this, I made sure everything was tight. And then I proceeded to do up the three 13 mm nuts to the top of the strut tower. So that is the drop link on and tighten up now. All we need to do is tighten these three on the top, which obviously hold the, um, the top mount up and the whole assembly up basically. Then I can actually put the wheel back on this side. Exciting. There, wheel back on. I'm now gonna go get some rest and then tomorrow we'll finish off the other side. See you in the morning. The next day. Good morning, team. How are we doing? I'm so glad we managed to get this wheel back on last night. I will go through and check all of the connections and everything is bolted together in a bit, make sure it is all tight enough. But 
we have got real problems on this side. We're gonna have to take the track or an end off once this off bed spin this round and explain to you exactly what is going on. So let's just get that nut back off again. So the issue at hand is this nut right here, which is for the front control arm, the bolt on it is rounded off. So I cannot do or undo that nut basically. So we've had to take off the control arm so we can spin this round. We're gonna try and angle grind or somehow cut this bolt in half. And the reason for that is we've got a brand new one. First thing I did then was take the bolt out that holds the front control arm to the subframe of the car. And then I use a T40 to jam up into the bolt and just try and undo that nut ever so slightly to give me a little bit more room to play with. So we've done a little bit of cutting. We've used the angle grinder and cut most of the nut in half. Right now, my girlfriend is down there cutting with a little hacksaw to try and basically get the rest of it off. She doesn't want to be on camera though, which is completely fine. <laughs> but she is trying to just cut the last little bit off so we can get the nut completely off, but it's not the easiest job. We actually did it. Yes, we did. Oh, we did it, babe. Me, you. Mm -hmm. Come on! So we've just got the old control arm out. I'm very glad we got that out. You can see where we angle grinded through the bolt in the end. But now we've got this brand new one to put in, and that is basically going to slot straight back into place. So it'll sit up there, and then it'll also go through the bottom of the hub. We also managed to damage absolutely nothing. So that is a result. So before I put this arm in, first thing I'm going to do is going to put a small bit of grease on this thread because um, then when we put the bolt on in a second or the nut should I say over this, it will go on a lot nicer and hopefully won't pull as tight as what we just had. And uh, yeah, then I won't have to spend another 80, no, 81 pound it was for a new arm. So that is that on. And basically I think the first thing I'm going to do is slot it back through the hole, get the bolt on on the bottom, lift that up into position, bolt it. And there we go, the new arm is fully in. It looks really, really nice as well with the finish on it, obviously because it's a cast piece. I wish all of the suspension components looked like that, but they don't because they're filthy as anything. Let's get that track rod end in, and then I think we're done. And just like that, both wheels are on, coilovers are on, and the car is ready to come back down. I'm almost as nervous as bringing this down as I did when I started the car because what if it all crunches and snaps and everything breaks, but we're gonna go for it, get it back on the jack, take the jack stands out and bring it down. Let's, let's, just, let's just do this. What a freaking achievement. We've now done suspension work and obviously we've got to wait for the uh, coilovers to settle in properly. The fitment on them and the ride height is looking quite nice. I'm very happy with that. But now I want to go out on a drive and just test these out and see what they actually feel like because it should theoretically improve handling, make it turn a little bit nicer, but I guess we'll try that out now. I've just fitted coilovers to my BMW 1 Series and I'm about to find out if that's a good idea or not. There we have it, it took a good chunk of an entire week just to do that, mainly because I was waiting on top mount which wasted about three days and then obviously that front arm, it just completely thrown a spanner in the works but 
That is only the fronts done this week as I'm waiting on rear top mounts to come so I can fit them. But the fitment on these is class. I am really, really happy with that. That's exactly what I was after when I bought these and I am over the moon with them. And now I think it's time we go on a drive and test the handling and see if it's made anything better. I mean, just driving out to here, it feels way more grippy. It feels like it's really planted to the ground when you go around the corner. And I want to go on a track day before I get rid of this car. And with these coilovers, that looks like it can be that much better. <laughs> So let's give it a bit of a test drive then. So my first initial impressions are it's a lot stiffer. It definitely bounces a lot more because the shocks aren't as soft as what they used to be. So I'm feeling a lot more of the impact inside the car instead of outside the car. And that's pretty much more race-like suspension, which basically means it handles a little bit better too. It just feels so much nicer. That one's almost a 0 to 60. Another thing is it's, it's not really making any noise. And I thought it would have, because you know, you've got a brand new Hello, tree cool. You got a brand new shock absorber in there. I thought it would have been like clanging and stuff, but obviously we've taken all of the track rods off as well, or both of the track rods. The steering is very straight, so I've put them back on pretty well. But yeah, there's no clanging really when, you know, turning the steering wheel or going over bumps. It all seems pretty good. Jesus, sticks to the road now. I guess one of the main questions as well is, are these practical? And I mean, I would definitely say yes, they are practical. They enhance the look. I mean, it looks 10 times better now. I love the arch gap, there's basically none. And it handles better, technically making it a bit safer. But overall, they might be stiffer suspension, but I, I can live with that. And I'm sure 99% of you guys can also live with that. Overall, I just, yeah, they're brilliant. For 360 pound, I can't go wrong. All the links for stands are down below. Whilst I'm here, I also want to explain that over the next coming weeks, videos might be slightly different. Next week, I'm going to be finish off a load of bits to the car. I've got like the badge on the back to put back on and I want to sort the headlights out and obviously get the rear struts in as well. But the week after that, is a, I've got a pretty big video then. I've, it's something that I've been working closely with another person to achieve or another company, should I say, to achieve. And yeah, I've got a pretty exciting video coming out that week which I, I can't wait for. It's a massive step in my YouTube journey and career. So I hope you guys are ready for it because I can't wait. And then the week after that, I've got a video on my mate's M135i, which he's just bought coming out. And then the week after that one, we'll be back on the car. It might be one of the last videos on the car as well. So make sure to stick around because that is the next four to five weeks roughly all planned out. It's got, I've got some exciting stuff coming up there, so hit that subscribe button below because you ain't going to want to miss a single bit of it, I can tell you that. That felt completely fine. These are brilliant. So there we have it. That is a proper first drive with the car. It handles incredibly, and that's only the fronts. So when I get the, the, uh, the rears done next week, oh, that is going to handle immensely better. I am so happy with these. Considering that I was debating whether getting them a couple weeks ago, now I've got them. I am over the moon. They are absolutely incredible. If you want coilovers for your cars, I'll leave links to stance down in the description for them. Make sure to check them out. They are budget, 
they are very good. Anyway, thank you guys ever so much for watching this week. Really appreciate you. I'll be back next week. We've got a load of things to finish up with the car and also get those rear ones in. But for now, that is where I'm going to leave it. I'll see you next week on Sunday. Have a fantastic week and I'll catch you then. Peace out.